Okay, okay. Are we live? <laughs> what's up? What's up? Welcome. That's not the chat. Sure, live So. That's working. Sure, live Amazing. So, Ben Crump is on the case. More lawsuits coming down the way. They just had a, a press conference a little bit ago. Good afternoon, man. Thank you guys for joining. Thanks for stopping by for a little bit. Um, we're going to be just watching some of this. See what else is going to be said. More people have come forward. There's a chat. Hey. Hey. Hola. Uh, I am looking at two stories, by the way, separate from this, like two new stories. Um, a private investigator friend called me about one person, which uh, I'm going to look over the weekend, maybe do a video on. And there's another, uh, I posted it on Facebook, some child, seven-year-old, that I'm waiting to see what happens with that because there's a lot of unconfirmed information going on. So I am looking at two new things. Uh, let me play the shorter clips first. Let's talk about, let's play this one right here. The Travis Scott spokesperson, he has not stopped grieving for the nine families, Travis Scott. So first, thank you for uh, having Welcome. me, and it, it, it is uh, sorry that it's under these circumstances. Um, yeah, there, there's a lot of confusion. As you saw in the clip preceding, it was chaotic. And uh, just like the police officers who were standing uh, in front of the stage with Travis nearly 30 minutes after it was declared a public safety emergency, Travis had no idea what was going on until well later, hours and hours uh, later. He was notified by his team after the event, after he was already um, gone from the event. What's up, what's you up? Saw, there was so much chaos, so much breakdown uh, in the communication. And that's why it was important for me uh, to, to, to work to try to help him out. Nine people have lost their lives. Nine families are grieving. And, and Gail, I'm a mom. My daughter's gone to one of these big concerts. And I can tell you, I spent three sleepless nights every day watching my phone, watching her location, because when you have crowds of 50,000 people, anything can happen. And while a lot of people are trying to place the blame, Travis is taking responsibility for moving forward and trying to make sure this never happens again to anyone's child. Oh, so this is Travis Scott's spokesperson. Former Baltimore Mayor Stephanie Rawlings Blake, now Travis Scott spokesperson. Cause I'm wondering, like, what is going on here? I'm trying to, like, oh, I'm reading an article as well. So I pull up the video. Yes, it's following the tragic Houston rap concert that left nine people dead. Former Baltimore City Mayor Stephanie Rawlings Blake is now the spokesperson for Astro World star Travis Scott. Okay, all right. So that's where we're looking at. And she went on the defense. So she's on the defense for Travis Scott. That's what we're watching. Just to give you guys a little bit of context before we watch the, um, the Ben Crump. You want the volume up a little bit? Okay, I could do that too. Yeah, it is a little bit low. Let me, uh, let me fix that. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, this audio sometimes it's kind of weird. Sometimes I download the files and then fix it. If not, then I'm just kind of here adjusting. Some of it's low, some of it's loud. And it's kind of like, you know. But what's up, man? Everybody, welcome. Appreciate you stopping by Friday. Friday, that uh, the press conference from yesterday for uh, Bati, that was that was tough. That was uh, when I saw oh Barty, sorry, I said Bati, Barty Shahani. Um, yeah, that that was really tough. It was hard to see her mother like that. But uh, there's a lot of other people coming forward. This stuff is getting. Um, uh, you know, it's been a mess. It really has been a mess. I was going to say it's getting messy, but it, it has been a mess. And, you know, it's not only going to be the people that are deceased and the families of the deceased, but it's going to be a bunch of people that were injured or people that were there or people that feel or, or went through any kind of, you know, trauma or injuries. All right. So let's try this woman again and see. So this is the representative for Travis Scott. Uh, if you guys wouldn't mind hitting like too, I'd appreciate it. Helps out the stream a lot. Please hit like. A clip proceeding, it was chaotic. 
And uh, just like the police officers who were standing uh, in front of the stage with Travis nearly 30 minutes after it was. Let's start it over. So first, thank you for uh, having me. And it, it, it is uh, sorry that it's under these circumstances. Um, yeah, there, there's a lot of confusion. As you saw in the clip preceding, it was chaotic. And uh, just like the police officers who were standing uh, in front of the stage with Travis nearly 30 minutes after it was declared a public safety emergency, Travis had no idea what was going on until well later, hours and hours uh, later. He was notified by his team after the event, after he was already um, gone from the event. As you saw, there was so much chaos, so much breakdown uh, in the communication. And that's why it was important for me uh, to, to, to work to try to help him out. Nine people have lost their lives. Nine families are grieving. And, and Gail, I'm a mom. My daughter's gone to one of these big concerts. And I can tell you, I spent three sleepless nights every day watching my phone, watching her location, because when you have crowds of 50,000 people, anything can happen. And while a lot of people are trying to place the blame, Travis is taking responsibility for moving forward and trying to make sure this never happens again to anyone's child. We can't hear what the person's saying, but she's, I guess, responding to questions. No, absolutely not. He was there trying to regroup with his team. Um, they were trying to figure out what was going on. It was hours and hours after uh, the concert when they actually found out the tragedy, how the tragedy unfolded. And he has not stopped grieving for these families. He knows that he is who he is because of his fans. His love for his fans is so deep. I was struck when I was speaking to him how deeply he was hurting because of what happened to the people he loves and in the city that he loves. When I say responsibility, Someone has to say, where are the breakdowns? Where was the communication breakdown? Where was the public safety breakdown? I mean, this notion that Travis had the ability to stop the concert is ludicrous. They have a 59-page mm. uh, operations plan, and it clearly says the only uh, two people that are, um, have the authority to stop the concert were the executive producer and the concert producer. Um, he was not responsible for this, but he wants to be responsible for the solution. And I'm here to make sure that we can connect the dots and to make sure that this tragedy, that there's a lesson out of this tragedy and something like this doesn't happen again. Wow. I wish we could hear what the other person was saying. Yes, his team is always concerned about safety. Um, you know, he, he does not hide from the fact that in the past he has made mistakes. But one thing he a lot of mistakes said to me, and he looked me in his uh, in my eyes and said that he's learned from that. And that's why he takes safety so seriously. He stopped when he saw that some he saw that something was amiss. He couldn't tell what it was, but he's so concerned about his fans. He stopped you in the video show. He stopped multiple times to try to get a sense of what was going on. And just like those police officers that were standing in front of the stage, he could not tell what was going on. Mm. Oh, absolutely. Um, first, I want to say that we're respectful. He's very respectful of their um, their need for privacy and space as they grieve, but he's uh, reached out to all of the families. Um, I've reached out to uh, the, the latest uh, unfortunate victim to let them know that in their time, um, he's there, he's here uh, to help if they want it. My pleasure. Well, that's interesting. So that's the Travis Scott spokesperson. Okay. And that's, uh, she was the former mayor of, uh, Baltimore city. Okay. 
and she's there to speak on behalf of Travis Scott and I guess kind of I don't know, maybe defend, I guess. Defend him. Damn. The other thing before we get to the the press conference, one more clip I wanted to play is this uh Astro World scanner audio. You might have heard it or not. I haven't heard it yet. I don't want to I'm going to play it in the background cuz, you know, TMZ. We're having some structural issues that could be catastrophic and we need everybody together. No small groups. Care less is unacceptable. It looks like the folks are coming out of the crowd complaining of difficulty breathing. Uh, this is the police scanner. Of crushing type injuries. Seems like the crowd is compressing, from what I can tell. Um, I was on the Delta side and I probably saw at least four or five people pouring out of the crowd just trying to get away from the crowd. The cops are still going on. The crowd is compressing, it's just a bit of compressing, and, uh, you know, the, the intel we're getting is that the, uh, that the barricade is, might be compromised or being compromised, so the crowd is compressing. Hey, uh, can I have the air please for a few seconds? Can I have the air for a few seconds? Hey, uh, I'm over here at the medical tent, and there's a lot of people trampled, and they're passed out at the front stage. Three or four, three, we're in the front of the stage. Uh, we have security up there. <laughs> people are taking them to the back. The unit asking about trampling, so I guess they're pulling them out and taking them to the back. Honestly, uh, we're getting multiple reports that people are found out unconscious in the crowd. HBCP to you know, target the reports. Um, right now, that crowd is super thick, super dense. If you go in there, this could possibly turn into an officer rescue situation, and that makes it extremely dangerous for everybody. So right now, if you can get in on the perimeter, get to them. If not, try your best to put commands into that crowd to help out. Other than that, be careful. Well, they have to stop the show because there's people trample and they're actually they're, 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 they're not breathing. You guys are doing well. Keep a, take a breath. Everyone's doing a good job. Now, listen, what I need is for people to get things under control at the medical tent. HFD's been advised. They are listening to our channel, and they're pulling people in to come and help, okay? Help is coming. Just take a deep breath and relax. We'll work through this. Anybody that eyes on Seth with Live Nation? Keep it, anybody that's close to Seth with Live Nation, can you advise? The here. We're here right now. Let's be back over. They're overhead right now. HB4 box. Give us an update on what's this. Hmm. All right. Well, let's check out this video here. Uh, this is Ben Crump. We represent more than 200 victims who wow. were injured mentally, physically, and psychologically at the Astro World Festival. Obviously, some of these victims have been catastrophically injured, who we represent and fatally injured and are fighting for their lives. At the onset, we continue to ask for prayers for a nine-year-old Ezra Blunt, we are praying for a miracle with his parents and his entire family at this time. This morning, we are announcing the filing of over 90 more lawsuits in this matter now that we have collected the information and the details and the evidence that they were present at the festival, that they sustained injuries at the festival and that we will make sure that they get justice because this should have never ever happened you're going to hear from several people this morning that is just symbolic of the number of people who we represent that were physically able to come and be here with us today some of them are not physically able to come. Some of them, for psychological reasons, are still haunted by what happened that night. As I told you, Attorney Hilliard, uh, with Hilliard, Martinez, and Gonzalez, based here in Texas, Attorney Darren Miller, based here in Houston, Texas, Attorney Ray Shackelford, based here in Houston, Texas, 
Marion Tolan and Charlie Jones from my office here are present, but most importantly, the people present with me are Ms. Gertrude Daughtry, who is seated here because she has severe injuries to her shoulders, her legs, uh, her ankle, most prominent, and the fact that she was on the ground for 15 minutes struggling to breathe. You're going to hear from Rena Ihita, who is experiencing severe post-traumatic stress disorder after witnessing people right near her carried out on stretches as she also was caught up in the melee. You're going to hear from Dijon Isaac, who was trampled and stomped and had tried to help people who he saw on the ground. You're going to hear from Bryce Nunn, who may be a little delayed trying to find parking, but he has a it is quite a few lawyers, right? I've seen, I even saw a video the other day. It was one of the same lawyers, but I saw a video the other day of somebody I haven't even seen. There's a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of lawyers. There's a lot of people coming forward. Now he, he's saying over 200 people. I mean, there might even be more coming forward. You know what I'm saying? Dislocated knee in his own, uh, need crutches to walk. Mm. Miss Unica Smith is going to, talk to you about how she was crushed how after she fainted and how she didn't know if she was going to make it or not and how she continues to have the recurring nightmare of what happened and let me before attorney Alex Hilliard comes and talk to you about some of the details in the lawsuit that was drafted this is not just about making sure we get justice for these people who have been severely injured. It is also about making sure that Live Nation and all of the organizers, promoters, and anybody else who had anything to do with the failure here that caused people to lose their children. I mean, Families lost their high school children, their college children. People were injured greatly. And nobody should ever die from going to a concert. So this lawsuit is not just about getting justice for them, but it's about making sure that the promoters and the organizers know that you cannot allow this to ever happen in the future, even if you have to immediately stop the concert. And we understand, Attorney Hilliard, that there were several people who could have stopped this concert when we saw these tragic circumstances start to occur around mm. the 905 time. And we have a timeline that breaks it down. And each and every one of them could have stopped the music, turned on the white hot spotlight board so everybody could see what's going on, everybody could see who was on the ground, everybody could see where everybody was at, and everybody could just take a breath. But they didn't do that. And that's what we are saying to Live Nation and everybody involved in the future, safety must be paramount. As Kristen Blunt says so passionately, I thought it would be safe. I thought it would be safe. That's what all of them thought. They thought it would be safe. They never knew something that was supposed to be a great memory for them. They went with family and friends. They never fathomed that it would be the worst nightmare of their life, where they witness people be killed, where they witness people crying out in agony as they were trumpeted on and they were stepped on and they were crushed. They never thought they would be at the concert hearing people say something that we hear far too much now, 
in the past year. People screaming, I can't breathe. I mean, the videos are everywhere. And when you think about what we're asking people to do, if you were at the concert and you have video on your cell phone, please visit us at astroworldclaimshelp.com to share the videos with us. If you witness stuff, please call us. If you were injured, please call us. Because what we're trying to do is make sure we gather all the evidence so this will never happen again. Also, we sued on behalf of EB in part to get justice for him, but to also ensure that our independent experts could get on the scene of where the crimes took place and they could see for themselves what they described as a war zone. I mean, you had shoes, you had clothes, you had blood spots all out there at the scene. And that was important because it corroborated what our clients have told us, that they were just trying to get out of there. They left their clothes, they left their shoes, they left cell phones. And when you look at that scene, you see for yourself, people were literally fighting for their life just to try to get out of there. And so that's important and the testimonial evidence is important. So if you have a story to let us know what happened so we can get to the answers of who failed, who failed in their responsibilities because each and every one of them will be held accountable. And these brave victims are going to tell you what they witnessed so other people hopefully will have the courage to come forward and tell their story. Right now, I have the honor of working with uh, one of the best lawyers and law firms in America based here in Texas, uh, Hilliard Martinez and Gonzalez. Attorney Alex Hilliard will talk about some of the details of our lawsuit. Then I'll mm. introduce you to our clients. And then after that, we will have questions and answers so we can uh, try to answer as many of them as we can. Attorney Alex Hilliard. The evidence in the investigation, which uh -huh. has been underway, including the inspection of the NRG stadium, has revealed that the criminal behavior in this case started weeks prior to the date of the concert. There was no plan in place for this to happen. They are legally required as the organizers, the risk directors, the security personnel to protect over 50,000 people and they didn't have a plan. At 9 a.m. when the gates opened, everything was out of control. As soon as the first person gets injured, if there's no plan, chaos ensues. The chaos grew and grew and grew until multiple people, 10 confirmed now, lost their lives. Thousands of people injured and tens of thousands of people who had to witness as CPR was given to their friends, to their daughters, to their sons, to their young brothers and sisters as they finally escaped a suffocating crowd. Over 45 minutes of torture as they tried to escape feeling trapped, feeling like they would lose their lives. I promise you every story from each client is more tragic than the one before it. Because nobody can be trapped like that without oxygen, without any place to move. Combining that with seeing someone die right in front of your eyes. And when you finally do escape that war zone and you get out of that crowd, you see multiple bodies on the floor. The medical staff was egregiously, egregiously short-staffed. They did not have enough personnel. They did not have enough stretchers. They did not have enough defibrillators to try to resuscitate all the people whose hearts weren't beating. 
We inspected the NRG Stadium where this concert took place. Our experts have confirmed from the evidence that was obtained that this concert never should have been approved in the first place. We are talking about the largest. Yeah, I haven't heard of a 10th person. I've only heard of nine up until now, and I just did a little search too. I'm only seeing nine, so I'm not sure where that's coming from. Organizer and promoter of festivals and concerts in the world. And when that happens, a failure of epic proportions on this type of scale, it is criminal. It is nothing but criminal. They have a higher duty to protect the public. They sold $350, $400, $450 tickets and decided not to protect even one of their ticket holders. Sadly, a lot of our clients didn't even understand when they bought their ticket because how could they that they were actually buying their own death sentence. We are honored to be representing our clients in this case. And at this time, I'd like to introduce to you a few of them so you could hear their stories. For the people that just joined, towards the end, when we get through all this, I'll play the clip with Stephanie one more time. That's the former Baltimore mayor, and she's like, I guess, the representative, as like speaking, or not a representative, the spokesperson for Travis Scott, and she basically, you know, is defending him. Uh, she was saying there's nothing he could have done. It wasn't his fault. He's not responsible. Um, I'll play the clip again one more time before we end. So if I forget, remind me. All right. So for the new people, we'll 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 check it out again. Don't worry. Um. But yeah, we're just kind of following up the, this this clip now with these attorneys just came out this afternoon, like I think like an hour ago or an hour and a half ago, something like that. So this is new. Um, I've been looking at other stories. I am working on two other things, you know, missing persons every now and then. That's what I do all the time, you know, looking up new things. But I'm, I'm following this as well. I'm really wondering, like, if we're going to be able to see the trial, you know, once this stuff happens. Um. I'm kind of curious to see what what that's going to be like, you know. And there's a lot of people coming forward. A lot of people. And this one, this says 100 plus, but Ben just said 200. And this clip that came after is it's a smaller clip of what we're watching. They said 200, like 200 concert goers. Like they're talking about not people, not people that are just like deceased or injured, but people even that have mental, uh, I guess PTSD, things like that. I nine. nine victims. I apologize. Nine. There we go. The corrected nine. nine. Let's, let's stay, stay right there, Alex. Stay. Alex, stay up here. Uh, right. First, we're going to have for you Miss Unika Smith, who's going to try to tell you what she experienced that night at Astro World Festival. Miss Smith, can we get the spelling of your name as well in your name? Yeah, I'm still U N I Q U A. Thirty-four. Yes. The Astro World Music Festival was by far the most traumatizing experience of my life. I'm a mother of two, and I went to the festival alone by myself. So I never thought that by attending the festival, I was taking the chance that I would possibly not return home to my children. When I woke up Saturday morning, I found that so many people that I had spoken with in the crowd were exposed to so much trauma. I had, I had no idea that people in the crowd had passed away that night. I was towards the front left-hand stage of the Utopia Mountain stage when Travis Scott began to perform. And the thing that stands out to me the most in my memory is that I remember being crushed from every side by human bodies all around me. When he began to perform his first song. The crowd began to jump up and down. And with so many human bodies contacting your body from every 
area with them jumping up and down, there's no way possible for you to maintain your footing. I was not able to stand on my own. We formed a camaraderie of sorts in the crowd to be able to hold one another up so that we do not go down. Um, by the third or fourth song, I remember trying to make my way out of the crowd and I tapped a woman to the behind me, maybe about two people behind me uh, to the rear. And when I tapped the woman to ask her to please move out of my way, you can tell that she was kind of, she was kind of having trouble breathing on her own. The next thing I know, the woman began to have a seizure. She was there with her best friend. Her best friend just started screaming out, oh my gosh, she's having a seizure. Please someone get the medic. I'm looking around for the paramedics. I don't see anyone responding. The woman hits the ground and I'm the next person behind this woman. Her feet are next to my feet. The only thing that I can think of is if I trip over this woman's feet, we're gonna create a pileup. There's no way possible that I'm gonna be able to get out of this crowd. Thank God there were people around me to help me and, 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 and help me to remain stable. And the only thing that I, the only thing I kept reassuring myself is that if I can get out of that crowd with the dense air, with all of the heat, with everybody crushing me from every which way, then I'll be able to, to breathe, to return, return to, to normal air. And um, unfortunately, I made, it, I made it through the crowd. I fainted as soon as I got through the crowd. I believe that by the time I started trying to leave the arena was around 9.45 p.m. I, I was caught in the I was caught in the madness and the mayhem until about 2.45 in the morning, not able to return to my children, no cell phone service, no way to Uber home, no way to contact anyone. There was no taxi service. So it was literally like I was trapped downtown by myself where I know no one. I don't know anyone here. So it was, it was truly the most traumatizing experience. And I had no way of even getting back to my car because where my vehicle was parked, I later found out that that was the that was the reunification site for the for the people who had who had lost their lives during the concert. So I was being I was purposely being rerouted from getting back to my vehicle because the the families needed to go and find out whether or not their family members were still alive where my vehicle was parked. Um, you want to talk about I, I have not, I have not, I, I know for a fact that I'll never attend. I, I, at this point, I feel as if I'm very shaken up with large crowds. I'm, I go, I, I feel like yesterday, for example, I went to the nail salon and as I'm sitting, I'm sitting there, the Astro World clips are on every single TV screen. You see people being carried out on stretchers. You don't have the opportunity to even move on with your life. You're forced to relive this over and over and over again. And I know that so many people think that that, you know, that, that that's helpful. And I know that, you know, everyone has their story, but it, it just, it just forces you to relive the trauma over and over again. And then the cell phone service. See, I've never really, I've been to like one horrible thing in 2010, but I've never really been to like a festival thing. Well, not with that many people or anything like that, really, like a concert like that. But the guy that I had on the channel, he told me that it's a common thing that the cell phone service doesn't work because apparently everybody's trying to use their cell, I guess, at the same time, like in a condensed area. And that causes issues. I hear that's a, that's a common thing at these events. There's discussions about it in person and online about what people in the crowd should have done and saying, well, if you were in the crowd and you noticed someone dying around you, why didn't you help? I'm not a licensed medical professional. I, only thing that I could think about was me not falling on top of this woman and crushing her to death. I, I, I'm not trained in how to respond to, to a crisis like that. So for people to pass their opinions on how the concert goers should have responded, that's completely inappropriate and traumatizing. And the reality is they shouldn't have responded. You should have had specialists, medical people, personnel there, crowd control personnel there, but they did not. And people are in severe need of mental health counseling because this has had a incredible mental strain on them 
these many days later, I, I'm just watching her body shake as she relives it. It's something that as a community, we're going to have to have some serious mental health counseling. Thank you so much, Ms. Smith, for hey, sharing your story. How old are your children? They're 14. 14 years old. Uh, are they twins? Or? Yes. Yes, twins. Hmm. Um, Trying to find out. Next, we will have Miss Rena Irahita come and tell you about her experiences that night. And you can just talk as loud as you can. <laughs> take, take your time. Spell your name. I, I'll spell it. You want to spell it? But, okay. R E Y. N A I R A H E T A. Let's take your time. 25. 25. I can't put together the words to say. You can't use the words her horrifying or anything. I just remember. Houston becoming a new home for me and being excited to finally get to share a little bit about what I love about Houston and having my best friend come into town and that was all we were looking forward to this concert just making memories and everything and always being on alert knowing okay these concerts are scary people making jokes about it but I always like to be aware I remember that day we were gonna get there later, but something just kept telling me, let's go earlier, let's go earlier. We went around two and I remember it was just a mess. It was it was horrible. There was people just walking in and out everywhere. Like it wasn't organized. You wouldn't see securities. I remember getting to the checkpoint and looking at my best friend and be like, why are there people here? Like, why are they just standing here? There's no one here, you know, covering them. Like, I don't feel safe. I hope everything is okay not knowing what happened earlier in the day. Then I finally got in. They never checked my bag or anything. They were letting people pass by with beers, cans, and all these different things. They weren't even checking on anything. That's what I was saying. When we spoke earlier about in one of the other videos, because we were talking about the whole Vax thing or whatever, not to get into that whole mess, but people were like, oh, it's a Vax event. Bro, they're not over there really checking everybody's, oh, are you Vax? Let's check. Are, and does it really match to you? There's no way in hell. Look at the way this thing turned out. I doubt they were checking for that. It's just, it just sounds nice. You know what I'm saying? It just sounds nice. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a Vax van or whatever. I'm not checking for that stuff, man. Anything. I remember getting to the merch and just being like, okay, it's probably crowded in there. Let's see this merch line. Let's wait here. And all of a sudden, you just hear yelling and you just see people running. And I just remember, I just got in defense mode and looked at my best friend and told him we need to leave. We need to get out of here. We're going to get trampled. And he, I remember him just being like, it's okay. Don't freak out. You're good. You're overreacting. And I'm being like, no, I'm not overreacting. I told you from the beginning, these people are waiting for something. They're waiting to just run in there. Like everyone knows that people plan this out. And so many people snuck in there. I mean, it looked like thousands and thousands of people snuck in. Anybody could have easily bought a gun or anything else if they wanted to do you know, mass damage, like some sort of mass casualty uh, shooting or something, if they wanted to, it would have been easy. There's no security there. Basically, there's barely any security there at all. And it's just frustrating knowing that I was just a person that never experienced any of this and I could see it and not seeing any workers anywhere, no police or anything. And then I got lucky to be able to cut into the right merch line. And I remember waiting there thinking, okay, the chaos is done. I remember seeing people getting thrown on the ground and i remember making the comment to my best friend i refuse to ever be at a place and witness someone die in front of me and me not be able to do anything and i remember thinking okay it's settled people aren't gonna come in anymore i remember seeing security just recording everything and i'm like confused what's going on it took some minutes and finally you see a bunch of sheriffs come in horses <laughs> and the annoying thing is Instead of them going to block off the VIP section, preventing from more crazy people to come in, they all just face us. And you just see them recording us. And it was just a horrible feeling thinking people that's supposed to protect us is just looking at us like we're 
some fools. Like, we're supposed to basically protect each other. And I remember just yelling at them, why are you guys pointing at us? Why are you guys intimidating us? We were here. We we're trying to avoid all this chaos. I remember two hours passed. People were getting really crazy on the left side of the merch. They were blocking it off. They weren't letting people come into that merch line. And I remember just saying something crazy is going to happen. I still don't feel comfortable here. And I remember my friends trying to joke off, trying to get me to feel good about it and not overreact like I always do. But I just didn't feel good. And then all of a sudden you just see people cheering and then everyone just breaks in that line and they get crazy and they started pushing each other just to get merch. And then I remember... They're willing to die over merch, man. People, it's just, just so crazy to see people do that over that merch stuff or to get closer to Travis. I was like, no, I was like, my line is short. I know something is going to happen. And just, I just remember looking back and then everyone just running, jumping, them pushing us to the side, not caring. And I remember yelling at them, like, why are you guys acting like this? Like, it's nothing. Like, we've been here for hours. Like, at least be respectful. Don't throw us to the side or anything. And I remember just dealing with that for four hours, being in that merch line, asking people, can you please give people water? Can you give us this? And I remember security just joking with us, laughing at us, telling us, oh, you guys are okay and everything, trying to joke around about us, about the merch and all these things. And I'm like, this is so insensitive. Thank goodness for that merch line because I was able to also meet two other people. And those two other people, we stuck together. It was about 6.30 where we finally were able to go into the event. And I remember I need to go get water for everyone. I need to make sure that we're good and everything. You guys stay together. And I went with one of my friends. We were in the long lines. You couldn't even get water. The horrible thing is the free water stations, they only had one in the beginning when you enter and then went all the way at the end and no one could see where the porta potties were and the lines were ridiculous and the only way that you could get water is if you had a container and i remember people begging asking for empty water bottles asking for anything and being able to just okay i'm gonna take care of my team and we were good Lid little baby performed it wasn't that wild and then it was time to move to the travis stage and when i saw people there i was just i didn't think much of it i was just like okay i hope they're okay i remember people just suffocating because people were just smoking in the crowds there was different things going on and in a type of environment like that you can't have a lot of the oxygen taken away and I remember just looking at my friends like if we need to eat let's go get everything now let's get together and do this and that okay we got food we came back we were excited we're like okay all that traumatizing stuff let's put it to the side hoping everything is going to be good i remember just looking everywhere and then my friends warning me about everything they remember them telling me it's going to get really pressured here make sure that you know that you're, you can breathe good make sure that you have space make sure that if you feel claustrophobic you go sideways do not go forward do not go straight do not do anything go sideways and try to leave because it will get packed here and then i remember just having people literally push us cut us in front of us i had guys that were six feet tall in front of me talking about we're gonna rage right here one of them had crutches i remember him saying i'm gonna hit people with this crutch and just making signals and stuff like that and i remember just having anxiety and telling my friend i can't do this i know you're joking around about it saying that it gets really pressured and you can't breathe but i just can't and i remember looking at the two people that i saw there and then all of a sudden someone just fell on us and that's what honestly freaked me out the most and I looked at them and I told them I can't do this. And it was literally one minute left for the countdown for him to come out. That moment I heard that time go down and that annoying music finally stop, which I can't stop hearing that music, by the way. Like every day it's just playing back and forth and it's just traumatizing. And I remember just looking at them and telling them I can't do this. I can't. I have to go. And the thing that breaks my heart the most is i don't know if one of the people there is still severely injured or not and i remember just seeing news and i hate that people are making false claims saying that someone died and i mean trying to figure out okay is this person good or not why didn't i tell them to leave with me because the moment that countdown went down my and my friends just grabbed each other and we went sideways and i remember everyone just pushing forward and it was hard breathing but we were able to get out and we were in a section away from everyone but I remember the whole time I just kept looking around. I was like, this doesn't feel good. Something's going on. And I remember him just saying words like, I need this stage to feel, I need an earthquake. And I was saying, why is he telling people that? I, I'm seeing a bunch of emergency response. I barely see anybody around. There was no security everywhere. 
it wasn't organized very well. I remember people just begging for water and me getting mad. Why is it you guys have so much money? Why can't you just give free water for everyone? The water was selling out and it was hard for people to get it. The concert was done. And I we all just thought, okay, it's just a concert. People are probably just dehydrated, they fell and everything, and literally literally the last moment that I turned around I witnessed someone on the ground they were getting compressed and there was an EMT machine on them and I just remember yelling at the paramedics please do your job but you're not doing it right you're not taking care of him and just yelling and then you just see them literally grab the body and just throw it in a cart like nothing and that broke my heart because all I wanted to do was go and and run behind them to make sure that that person was okay but I couldn't because everyone was trying to leave and it was just chaotic and leaving that place was horrible I lost my friends I got lucky that I knew where my parking lot was but all that moment I didn't know how crazy everything was because I had no service and then waking up the next morning having calls and texts from people asking are you okay are you good this and that and I was wondering what's going on and then finally looking at the news and seeing the stuff that I saw wasn't just what I was thinking was really more than traumatizing that word can't even it, I can't even speak of it because it's such a horrible feeling thinking that I witnessed someone lose their life right in front of me and have people there just say oh it's drugs or it's just this and that and me saying it's a life that it could have been more and then seeing the face of who it was breaks my heart to this day and it's horrible because all of this could have been prevented before the event could have even happened exactly. thank you thank you 90210 apparently i didn't know this they they put me on to this it's one of travis scott's songs i mean i don't think i've ever heard of it i don't think i've actually listened to it but when people say that they're referencing uh one of his songs i don't know if they they played that at this um at that event either and i guess it's also a, a zip code a postal code sí. el, el, lo que ocurrió en este evento era bien horrifico yo pienso que todo eso se puede i'm gonna fast forward this yep. what unica and reina is mm -hmm. articulating is very similar to what everybody said they went well yeah when i think of 90210 i always i think of beverly hills but i guess they're they're talking about the song to the concert oh it's except for beverly expecting hills. Okay. it to be safe beverly not hills. expecting it to be deadly and they are shaking and they keep having these nightmares even while they're awake at nail salons still thinking about what they witnessed and there are literally dozens of other people who have told us just as horrific stories. Next, you're going to hear from Dijon Isaac to tell you about what he experienced. It's D-I-S-H-O-N. So I was on the left side of the stage. Um, about 45 minutes prior to Travis coming out is when it started to get intense. Um, there was pushing that started happening behind us. Fights were breaking out. People were throwing water bottles. Um, it was basically a war zone. And it just got worse and worse the closer to when Travis was coming out. Um, I think around the five minute mark, the pushing began to be so aggressive. Each time I would be pushed, I'd almost touch the ground. Back and forth, back and forth. And at this point, you're at the mercy of the crowd. You're, we were packed in so tight. We were like sardines in a can. and. The feeling was like, imagine someone coming up behind you and bear hugging you as hard as they possibly can. And it's just bodies. So around five minutes, people started falling over. Um, and I just remember, I remember the look of terror on people's faces around me. Everyone realized like, we have to get out of here. And I remember there was a, a girl next to me and before the pushing had started, she was just saying that that she, she knew she wasn't gonna enjoy the concert because she was already like, I, I'm tall, so I was able to get air on the top, but everybody else basically was getting suffocated. And so when the pushing started happening, when, as soon as Travis came out, I felt the flames and I realized I had to get out of there or I was gonna get crushed to death. So um, I started making my way out 
and basically I was telling people to back up. Hey, we're trying to get out. People were rushing the stage. Um, there was one point where someone said, everyone put their hands up. I put my hands up and I wasn't able to get them back down. Um, when I finally got them back down, I basically teamed up with the people immediately around me and I told everyone like get low and like basically put your arms out like this so you can create some space for yourself. And so we're doing that and I'm starting to make my way out. I hit a fence on the side where a bunch of people had fallen down and the whole time like I'm trying to pull people up and I'm pulling someone up. There's people on the ground trying to like use me to pull themselves up. And I just remember thinking like if I fall, it's over for me. Um, and, um, so I, I find a way to, to get off the wall and I start going to the back. I'm making my way through the crowd. The whole time the pushing is still happening. The, the crushing is still happening. And I reach a point where I'm losing consciousness and I'm like, I don't, I look above the crowd. I don't see an end in sight. And I just feel like people pushing me from behind. And finally I hit a pocket of air. And at that point, I just go as fast as I can through the crowd. I was, that night I was wearing a, a sweater like this and a hoodie and I had sweated through both of them completely. Like I could I literally took off my hoodie and I could squeeze it out and there was sweat. Um, I got to the end and I sat on the sidewalk and just sat there like in a daze for minutes. And I just remember bodies everywhere, like limp bodies, people pulling bodies out of the crowd. Um, the minute Travis came out, I, I went with a friend and I turned around and looked for him, he was gone. There was no cell phone service, so finally when I went far back enough, he called me and was like, bro, where you at? I spent 20 minutes on the ground and the girl, there was a girl next to me who was for sure dead. And I didn't realize that people, other than that experience, a day later he sent me an ABC News article saying that two people had died that were standing literally right next to me. And I'll never forget, I'll never forget the look of terror on people's faces. I, that's the thing that sticks with me the most. I remember there was a girl at one point who was holding my hand. I didn't know this girl whatsoever, but she held my hand. I held her hand as long as I could until eventually I lost her in the crowd. But yeah, that was, that was pretty much the experience in a nutshell. Thank you. That's a war zone. And, and why is it that Deshaun and others had to try to come up with safety plans for an escape route. Where were the crowd control personnel there? Where were the medical personnel there to help them? I mean, it is <laughs> malfeasance on every level. And that's why we have to get the answers. You, we, we cannot have where people go to a concert and they die. That is unacceptable in 2021. It is so preventable. This was so preventable. People sometimes try to say, well, you weren't physically injured like Miss Daughtry or Mr. Nunn uh, who's on crutches. What's the problem? They have severe mental issues. Post-traumatic stress disorder is very real. And we're hearing it over and over again. These people are not able to just turn the page and go back to normal. And we as a society should take very seriously their mental health after this tragedy. And we're saying to Live Nation and everybody, don't try to sweep this under the rug as if it's not real. It is real. It's very real. Thank you. How do we spell your last name? It's I S A A C. And how old are you? 31. And you live here in Yes. I ended up walking home from NRG after that. To where? A museum district, Montrose area. Ben Crump. Now we're going to have Ms. Daughtry come to you. She's having some problems emulating, so we're going to assist her. Time. I've never experienced anything of a, a I just, it's like, 
I just literally thought I was gonna die. I was like, I never thought that going to our entertainment would turn out to be such a disaster. It was a nightmare that I never forget. I I can't sleep at night. Every time I close my eyes, I see it. It's just I'm lost for words for it. Never seen so many people on the ground fighting for their life. Never know that you will buy a ticket and it will be your death ticket. It's just it's devastating. It's like a nightmare. I don't even like talking about it. And, and that's her mental injury. Can you tell a little bit about your physical injury, Ms. Daughtry? And when I fell, off? I fell to the ground. Uh, my back, they, I was walked on. If it wasn't for my brother, I probably wouldn't even be here today. But I managed. To, we managed to get out the crowd. But my I was walked on with my back, my leg. I already had my ankle messed up and it got injured. I, um, it was like I couldn't breathe. I was, wow. Yeah, she was there. Thank you. Oh. I mean, I guess people of all ages go, but, you know. Okay. Oh. Wow. Yeah. I used to see, uh, when I used to go to space back in the day, I used to see people older there. And you could tell some of these people were, I mean, I'm not saying anything about her, but these people were popping pills. The older people, some of them, they were getting it in. They looked like they were in their 60s or something, popping pills out there in space. So, yeah, sometimes um, I guess, you know. But Travis Scott, damn. And I, I, I will spell it loud, sir, back here. Travis Scott, concert? Gertrude, G-E-R-T-R-U-D-E, Daltrey, D-A-U-G-H-T-E-R-Y. Uh, 59 years old. 59? Wow. Okay. And she's a grandmother. Uh, and, and, and this just shows that this was truly promoted as a family-oriented festival. And you have people of all ages there uh, to enjoy the festival, never knowing that, as Miss Daughtry said, it will turn into a disaster, a disaster that has changed their lives forever. Y you know, yo, the chat, man, you guys are killing me. <laughs> this is crazy, man. The chat. Uh, space was uh, space is like a, it's still there, in Miami. It's a club that's like house music. I mean, I think they have other nights too. But I would only go for the house music. I mean, I feel like that type of music can lend to like a middle-aged crowd or older crowd. The Travis Scott thing, a little surprising, but I mean, hey, I guess everybody getting it in. Somebody said grandma raging. Oh my God, you yeah. It's one thing for us to talk about it. It's another thing for you to witness it with your own eyes. You saw the pain on Unika's face. You saw the pain on... Rainer's face, you saw the pain on Deshaun's face, Deshaun's face, and certainly you saw the the very expressions on Gertrude's face, and it's real. And so we have followed this. Hey, you're all ages, man. People bringing the kids, so you, the older people got to be able to go too, I guess, right? People bringing their five year olds and stuff like that, two year olds, whatever. This lawsuit. And we expect that because we have uh, dozens of other people calling every day and we're trying to collect the information, the whole team of lawyers and staff, that we will be following others because one thing is for certain. We 
will not let them get away with this. There will be accountability and we're going to make them have changes in the industry. And so these people knocked over grandma out there. They stomped out a nine year old child and then they knocked over the, the grandmother that was out there. Well, there's George Floyd or the children in Flint, Michigan, all these cases, not just about justice for those who are injured in this tragedy. It's about trying to make changes where all of our children and our neighbors will be safe. They will get to come home to their mothers and fathers, and they will get to come home to their brothers and sisters and their friends. And unfortunately, not everybody who went to Astro World Festival got to come home to their families and friends. And that's why we're here. We'll take some of your questions. Can you clarify that number? Was it 100 or 200 plaintiffs that you're representing? We're representing two, over 200 plaintiffs. Damn, over 200. I mean, I guess with 50,000, you know, you're going to expect people to come forward. But over 200, man, damn, how many? Ben Crump's taking on a lot of people. I think that might be the most that, I, that, I, that I've heard of uh, for this for this uh, Astro World thing, that how many people they're taking on? 200 plus. Damn. And, you have and, we, and we filed over 93 lawsuits to we, date. As of today, we have filed 93 lawsuits. We filed one lawsuit this morning on behalf of 90 plaintiffs. Attorney Trump, yeah. Attorney Trump, could you please? Crump. I, 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 a lot of stuff is private and they want it to remain private uh, uh, his health condition the only thing his mother and father continue to ask is for prayers please continue to pray for that nine-year-old baby uh, that's the only thing they don't they don't want to get into anything else but ask everybody to pray for them yes yes Absolutely, everybody, 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 everybody. His name is on the lawsuit, but Live Nation, we don't ever want it to get lost. That Live Nation is the largest concert promoter in the world. They do these every day. If Travis Scott is accountable, he absolutely should be held accountable. But don't forget that Live Nation does this every day, all day, every part of the world. So if we want the change to make sure people are going to be safe, we got to be talking to the person who is the parent corporation, the industry leader. That's the only way you get change. That's the only way we save lives. We don't just point at the little people, we point at all of them, and we don't let the big people get away. Mr. Crump, yes. We're investigating everything. We're not taking anybody's word for anything. That's why we had all our experts out there on the scene, meticulously documenting, we're getting all the audio, from all the 911 transactions, we won't leave not one I undotted or one T crossed because mm. they matter. They deserve that. Israel deserves that. People who lost their lives deserve every question to be answered. So we're not going to let anybody off the hook. Question. Yes, ma'am. We have seen throughout the investigation, we have seen evidence from the logs. It does show that there was knowledge on behalf of the promoters, on behalf of the security and for-profit medical corporation that was hired to be there to protect people. This was a mass casualty event and should have been shut down long before it actually was finally shut down by the HPD, the Harris County Police Department. 
The logs only detail a tragic timeline of understanding and knowledge from these corporations that people were dying and that steps should have been taken to shut the concert down and nobody did anything. Yes, sir. Question for Deshaun, some of the survivors. Deshaun, if y'all if y'all can come up, they, we're with you. And if you don't want to answer the question, just say, you know, step a little closer. Of organizing you need to step a little closer. While you're going through that, help. Um. I don't know if the performers were aware. I feel like once I got out, I saw Travis stop the concert once or twice to make sure um, people who had passed out were helped out. But other than that, I I was, honestly, I couldn't pay attention to really much at the time. I was just pro trying to process what had just happened. Any other questions? You mentioned that there were sheriffs I, I wouldn't, I'm sorry, I, I wouldn't know the diff, the diff. Oh. Of course, sir. She can't hear you, hear your question, ask your question again. You described that there were sheriffs there on horses in the past, but. I'm going to get your super chats in a second, too, guys. Uh, we're almost done with this, because I see you guys asking questions or putting your opinion. To be honest, I just heard everyone in the crowd yelling, the sheriffs, and then I remember having to get on my tippy toes and seeing them, so I wasn't really sure like what I saw, but I know that... Did they end up helping anybody or... No. To, to be honest, what they were doing, like, what they would do is when people were still coming in, because the thing is they didn't block off the VIP entrance, what they were doing is we're just scaring people with the horses, and I remember just seeing the horses being very distressed too, and being very like incorruptible. They didn't want to work with the people because they were distressed too. And I remember them just walking around and just recording, honestly. I didn't see them try to help anybody. The people that got, um, that did stop, the people that broke in were the, the other security, the people that were hired, but I didn't see any of them do it. And then throughout the event, they weren't there. I literally would just see the same two it, um, police officers, I didn't see any more throughout the event. Damn. Yes, ma'am. Do you believe there's anything more that the Houston Police Department could have done at this site, at this concert, as it was going on? Or were their hands tied just like the fire? Well, we're investigating everybody and everyone. We think that there was failure of responsibility on every level, and we want all those questions answered. One of the things I you know, you get emotional because these were such preventable losses and as you get to know the families, it, it just hits you. You know, I have a nine-year-old daughter and I, I just keep thinking about how uh, Israel parents, you know, what could be going through their mind when you are going to a family festival that has been promoted like that they have so many children who are fans because of Fortnite, because of McDonald's, kids meals that, you know, had Travis Scott. And so you knew this was going to be family oriented because you invited, you promoted it to the world. And so it really is about, I, 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 attorney here, you know, when I get involved in a case, it's really not just about trying to get justice for this family. Uh, that person. It's about trying to make change. Thurgood Marshall would always say, no, no, we're not just fighting for this individual. We're fighting to have a greater impact on the larger society. And they have concerts and music festivals all over the world. And if it can happen here in Houston, it can happen in your city too. So what I'm trying to do, what we're committed to doing is trying to have a change in the industry for the better. Oh, it's, we got the lawsuit available. If you go to press at Ben Crump .com, so we will provide. Oh, everybody, absolutely. Yes. You can go look back at all our lawsuits. We have 20 defendants and named, Deshaun's and that that number is growing. And Deshaun said he was standing next to some people who had passed away. Deshaun, do you know who that was? Um, I believe it was the guy's name who starts with a D. It was uh, the one who was trying to save his fiance, and that's the mm. reason why I remember them. Babe. Yeah, yeah. And then um, I think it was James or Jake. Who was the Jacob. Other one. Jacob. 
Jacob, maybe? Was I think so. A, was that a defense that you were talking about? No, uh, this was before, before like the shoving and everything started. They were, I think, to the right of me. And then I remember trying, the fiance trying to get out and like helping, trying to help her like get between me. Uh, Sorry, what was that? Yeah, oh, 31. And Wayne how 25. Many? 25. And Unique. 30. And Unique is 34, mother of twins. Uh, Attorney Hill, you know, I'll try to take one or two more questions. And, yes. Can I ask this for you, um, as well as possibly one of the victims, and I'm sorry for the way you went through. You were talking about change, and obviously that's long term. Um, can you speak, and also possibly one of the victims, because I'm sure you guys have thought about it. Certainly, I'll go first and then attorney Hilliard and then if any other th witnesses. You know, when you think about crowd control, they know how many tickets they sold. You know, you know how big the arena is. You can predict and strategize what to do. You have to have, uh, uh, I'm sure the demographics, you have to have proportionality for every hundred people or every 200 people we need to have a medical provider we need to have a security personnel we need to have a, a escape route we need to have a plan we want them to be more vigilant in preventing not being reactive but be proactive See, and that's what we right. think was lacking here they were not See, proactive in Sorry. dealing with all of the foreseeable things it is not Dijon Isaac's job to come up with an escape route. He was a customer. He had paid money to purchase the ticket. He wanted to just come and enjoy the show. He didn't know that he was going to have to be a uh, uh, emergency life care provider. We're going to watch for all the people that are just came. We're going to watch after this, the woman, Stephanie, that is, uh, the representative, I guess, the spokesperson is what they're saying for Travis Scott. I actually found the clip where we can see the person that she's talking to. I think it's Gail. I forgot the rest of her name, wherever that is. So we're going to we're gonna start that in a second. I'm going to get the super chest before we start that. At the show, he didn't know he was going to have to be a law enforcement officer trying to clear the path. He didn't know he was going to have to be a mental health counselor trying to hold on to the young lady's hand who he didn't know to try to encourage her just to stay together. Miss Daltrey, on the ground, as she told us uh, in our intake, she thought she was gonna die on the ground. They should have had people in place to be able to deal with crowd control and deal with safety. And so, whether there's some policy or whether there's some regulations that have to be passed, you can never have people go to a concert and die. I mean, unjustifiable deaths. I, I, Alex, I, it's I not, it's not rocket science for Live Nation. Like we said, they're the biggest billion dollar promoter, organizer, and advertiser of these festivals around the world and they acknowledged that there was a danger and a risk that people were going to get hurt in the plans for this festival. And when that happens, the first step is you put an age limit on who can attend. You do not. Oh, you're not allowed to say that age limit. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, they get mad when you talk anything about age with the with the kids being there. Not let nine years. But I actually I'm being a little facetious, but I do think there should be a, a age limit, though. Like, uh, and we've talked about that like with Silvio and the friend and the mother <laughs> the guy that we interviewed the mother 14 year olds 14 year olds 5 year olds into a concert that you have acknowledged as an organizer and promoter that people <laughs> are likely to get hurt we need extra security and site personnel on site and then allow every single age to come in the doors to what <laughs> to make money. That's why they did this. Do you all I agree. It should be an age okay. thing. All right, last question. Just too much craziness, man. Can you 
We anticipate the evidence is going to be, uh, it's going to be months as the criminal investigation happens. We anticipate that over the next months, we will continue to investigate every single level of failures. From the very top at Live Nation to the security team, we're not going to leave one stone unturned. As you know, there are, there's a, a criminal investigation happening, which we intend to comply with. But as this lawsuit goes on, we will be taking the depositions of the highest ranking executive officers that had the power to shut this concert down and didn't. And they're going to have to testify under oath as to what their reasoning was, mm -hmm. what their unimaginable reasoning was for not shutting it down when they knew people were already dying. It had been declared a mass casualty event. And I, I use Ms. Daltrey's words, it was a disaster. And Live Nation, if you want to prevent future disasters, you need to act now, not just for those who were injured, but to make sure in the future we prevent injuries. We don't want to be reacting like we're doing here in Houston. We want to be proactive as we go forward. Mm. Last question. Mm. They they shaking their head. That if if somebody harmed you or you died, I think the question in your mind and your loved one's mind is we want everybody held accountable. Everybody. And so I want to put that question to bed once and for all. Everybody and anybody who had any responsibility for this festival should be held accountable. Thank you. Mm. 200 plus people. I think they said 80 or 90 something lawsuits filed so far. Wow. And I didn't know about this uh, this woman that was out there too. I guess they just knocked her over the the older lady. Damn. I mean, I guess you shouldn't. But what happened to the nine year old? It's not that surprising, I guess. Okay. 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 So who saved John? And then the the one woman said too that there was somebody out there on crutches, raging with crutches, and that supposedly this guy was somebody who was going to start beating people with the crutch. I was like, what kind of people are going to these events? Crutch raging. Let me pull up the super chats on the stream, and then we're gonna pull up the CBS video to the lady Stephanie. Things acting up again. That's all right. That's all right. That's okay. Dashboard. Make sure I get your guys' uh, messages. There we go. Okay. So, uh, let's see. Stephanie, thank you so much for the super chat. Mom for babies. Hello, everyone. Ben Crump is going to have more money than Ben Crump and Warren Buffett put together. Live Nation better open their wallets also. Yeah. Everybody's suing, man. You don't have to, you know, it could just be, you know, you face some sort of PTSD or whatever, and you could, you could probably join up. I wonder how many people are going to end up at the end of this, you know, joining the lawsuits. Uh, C87 baby. He was so concerned. Look at the ambulance and resumed his auto tune. All the blinking she's doing is irritating me. C87 baby Mel. So they had them call your family and loved ones because you're not going to have cell phone service. How scary before this concert of hell. Thanks C8. I agree. Capri. How credible are these witness accounts? Just asking. I'm sure that uh, once they go into the courtroom or whatever, the people that are like Live Nation or whatever, I'm sure they're probably going to go vetting all these people because they're going to try to protect their interests as well. So, you know, I don't know who was there or not. We're just hearing the accounts, but I'm sure these people are not going to just give up the money like that. You know, uh, HB2N, mother of two is fine. Thank you, man. Capri. That's why I asked about credibility. How do we know these witnesses were there? Yeah, I don't know what they're going to do. I don't know if they're going to, because, I mean, 
it's not even to take away from anybody that's here on TV or whatever, but I'm pretty sure they're going to have to do something, right? Because like anybody just from Texas is going to be like, yeah, I was there too, man. Yeah. Yeah, I was there. You know, so I don't know if they're going to like actually, I don't know, pull it. Like, let me see your ticket or, you know, um, can you show a picture or I don't know. Yeah, that's a good question, actually. I'm not, you know, not taking anything or being disrespectful, but just in general, you know, are they going to, you know, on our, our ticket, are people going to be selling their used tickets online so other people can join the lawsuit thing? You know what I'm saying? Like $3,000, here you go, you know, selling my ticket, you know, that you can say you were there. And then, I don't know. Um, And I don't mean that in any disrespectful way before these people try to cancel me. Like, cancel him. But it, it's, a, it's an interesting question. You know, but I'm like I said, I'm pretty sure these other people, they're going to try to make sure because a lot of people snuck in. You know, I'm pretty sure the people that snuck in aren't uh, eligible. I would think there's no way, right? If you snuck in, you just you, you, up shit's creek, or whatever they say, right? Michelle's peace in life. This press conference just feels a little off. I hate it for those truly affected, but some take advantage of these terrible situations. This is sad. Capri, I agree with Michelle. Peace in life in Crump's class uh, class uh, suit needs examination and the young man in a white shirt definitely created his story based on the news. Ooh. Ooh. Um Michelle praying for all truly affected. So much destruction at the concert. It's crazy. Thank you, Mel, so much for your platform and hard work. Thank you. Appreciate the super chats. Uh Weird T, always look forward to Ick and Mel live stream. Thanks. I wasn't even gonna come on. I was kind of chilling. I was working on some Facebook projects, but I saw this pop up and I'm like, oh let me just pop in for a little bit. C87, if there's an issue with the age limit, then Stormy shouldn't have been there either. I don't care. Travis needs to, needs to pay too. And Julie, thank you so much for the super chat. All right, let's check out this. Uh, We're joined. Let me pull up the video. So this is the Travis Scott spokesperson, okay? And she's saying Travis is grieving. Travis is grieving, okay? He's grieving. Yeah, y'all, the people getting mad at him, they shouldn't be getting mad at him. It's out of his control. Let's see what she has to say. This is um Stephanie Rawlings Blake, and she was like the former Baltimore mayor. Something like that. Stephanie Rawlings Blake, if her name and her face sounds familiar, it's because she's used to dealing with tragedy and controversy. Oh, let me adjust the volume too. Boop. Make sure I have audio with normal sound. She, she's the former mayor of Baltimore. She's now serving as Travis Scott's spokesperson. Stephanie, it's good to see you. I'm very sorry it's under these circumstances. This story is heartbreaking on so many different levels. You know, there's a lot of finger pointing going on, much of it directed at Travis Scott, in particular from some of the people who were there that night. Can you tell us when was he aware that this... Yes, please, if you guys wouldn't mind getting the likes up, I appreciate it. Helps out a lot. ...concert, it turned into such a tragedy. So first, thank you for uh, having me, and it, it, it is uh, sorry that it's under these circumstances. Um, yeah, there, there's a lot of confusion. As you saw in the clip preceding, it was chaotic. And uh, just like the police officers who were standing uh, in front of the stage with Travis nearly 30 minutes after it was declared a public safety emergency, Travis had no idea what was going on until well later, hours and hours uh, later. How, how was he notified? He was notified by his team after the event. I wonder why they did that. Why they got to play the, the song in the background? You're trying to get me claimed to the live stream. And then you got these guys in the back. Is that, are, are they trolling CBS or whatever? After he was already um, gone from the event. As you saw, there was so much chaos, so much breakdown uh, in the communication. And that's why it was important for me uh, to, to, to work to try to help him out. Nine people have lost their lives. Yes. Nine families are grieving. And, and Gail, I'm a mom. My daughter's gone to one of these big concerts. And I can tell you, I spent three sleepless nights every day watching my phone, watching her location, because when you have crowds of 50,000 people, anything can happen. And while a lot of people are trying to place the blame, Travis is taking responsibility for moving forward and trying to make sure this never happens again to anyone's child. Yeah, there are reports that he had gone to Dave and Buster's and was partying. I think it's important to point out that when he was at Dave and Buster's, he couldn't possibly have known that this was that this had 
devolved into the what it had become. No, absolutely not. He was there trying to regroup with his team. Um, they were trying to figure out what was going on. It was hours and hours after uh, the concert when they actually found out the tragedy, how the tragedy unfolded. And he has you not said stopped grieving for these. Mm. So he, she said that, you know, she says he's grieving, still grieving. He hasn't stopped since that day that we saw him on video. Uh, he put, I think he put a filter on, right? He put the black and white filters. I don't know. Why did he put a filter on? We're in the filter age, right? Everybody has a filter. So, but he put the black and white filter and he's like, you know, remember the videos kind of covering his face. And she said from that time that he's still grieving for the families and families he knows that he is who he is because of his fans his love for his fans is so deep i was struck when i was speaking to him how deeply he was hurting because of what happened to the people he loves and in the city that he loves yeah i i heard you say that he's taken responsibility and he definitely did see the ambulances right didn't he at one point he like referenced it and then said put your middle fingers up or something like that what do you mean by that and he wants to make sure this doesn't happen again what do you mean when I say responsibility, someone has to say, where are the breakdowns? Where was the communication breakdown? Where was the public safety breakdown? I mean, this notion that Travis had the ability to stop the concert is ludicrous. They have a 59-page uh, operations plan, and it clearly says the only uh, two people that are um, have the authority to stop the concert were the executive producer and the concert producer. Um, he was not responsible for this, but he wants to be responsible for the solution. And I'm here to make sure that we can connect the dots and to make sure that this tragedy, that there's a lesson out of this tragedy and something like this doesn't happen again. You know, you pointed out there is video of police officers in front of the stage. They actually seem to be enjoying the concert. They were se seem to be singing along and videotaping. Uh, and oh, no. They say the police were raging, too? Oh, Lord. Hold on seem to be singing along and videotaping uh and they're right in front of travis at the time so oh, they didn't no. appear to be aware of it certainly travis didn't appear to be aware of it did travis scott and your and his team have any conversations with officials before about safety at this event yes his team is always concerned about safety um you know he, he does not hide from the fact that in the past he has made mistakes but one thing he said to me and he looked me in his uh, in my eyes and said that he's learned from that and that's why he takes safety so seriously he stopped when he saw that some he saw that something was amiss he couldn't tell what it was but he's so concerned about his fans he stopped you in the video show he stopped multiple times to try to get a sense of what was going on and just like those police officers that were standing in front of the stage he could not tell what was going on has he reached out to any of the families stephanie oh absolutely um first i want to say that we're respectful he's very respectful of their um, their need for privacy and space as they grieve but he's uh, reached out to all of the families um, i've reached out to uh, the, the latest uh, unfortunate victim to let them yeah. know that in their time um, he's there. He's here uh, to help if they want it. All right, Stephanie Rawlings Blake, thank you for taking the time to speak with us this morning. Thank you. My pleasure. Very interesting. And this is the spokesperson for Travis Scott. I mean, I guess kind of like seems like damage control a little bit. Um, I mean, I don't know if this is too soon or I don't know if there's ever really going to be a right time anyway. But, uh, hmm. Yeah, Stephanie Rawlings. And they even pulled out video of the police. I was like, oh, man. I was like, damn. I mean, it, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I guess what are they? I don't know. But the police were there chilling, too. Partying, I guess. I mean, that was obviously before. I mean, I don't know what the time frame of that video is. Uh, but there were some police out there at the front, at least. Uh, one final thing, too. Yo, if you guys wouldn't mind, for people that have Facebook, when you have a chance, just go to Facebook, uh, type in Naked Mel. If you wouldn't mind just hitting like or sharing my videos, I'm doing a, a Reels challenge for this month. And so I need the videos to kind of spread out. So if you have Facebook, I know a lot of people don't like Facebook, but if you have Facebook, 
just go over there and you know leave a comment or like or whatever that would help out a lot with the post and there's a lot of shorter clips if you like the shorter content kind of quick stuff 30 seconds uh you can go on facebook and you catch some of the highlights and stuff over there and sometimes even different stories so all right let me see if there's anything else with travis i'll check out some of the um comments yeah this month there's a challenge on facebook i'm trying to take it as far as i can Travis Scott. Yeah, that's the latest. Stephanie. Travis Scott fans are divided over who to blame for the astral tragedy. I don't know. Everybody's going to sue now, though. I mean, if I went, I'd probably get in on a lawsuit, too. I mean, if I, you know. I don't know. And there's so many people. I don't even know how you could even settle this stuff, right? Like, I mean, I don't know if they'd be able to come to, to terms, but how would they even settle? Can you please put the short video clips into a, uh, into a sad what on YouTube? Because I do not go. It has to be Facebook. That's the Facebook's trying to promote they're reels they're trying to compete with other platforms so that's why i post it there but to post it on youtube it would kill my analytics it wouldn't it'd be no benefit to me to post 30 second videos on uh on youtube thank you i appreciate it yeah if you don't do facebook that's all right just for people that are there already yeah if you wouldn't mind i'd appreciate it that'd be cool i know a lot of people are moving away from facebook YouTube's get, getting rid of the dislike counter as well, so I'm not sure what the people are going to do. And I, I don't even think it's... A, the YouTube says it's about creators. I really don't believe it's that. I really believe, and I was talking on... We were talking on Discord last night a little bit, a little bit about it. Nah, YouTube shorts, I'm good, man. Not gonna, I'm not going to do that. I, I know a lot of people do. I'm not going to do that. Um, That whole dislike thing, that's to protect all the crappy videos that are out there. And the political stuff and like the white house page that's trashed if you go look at the ratio on their white house page is trashed <laughs> or some of the other more controversial things i think they're really just protecting they don't want the public to know um what the public really is feeling what the what the how things are being truly perceived and so i think that they're uh they're gonna move they're gonna remove the dislike count i mean to me it makes no personally on my channel it's not gonna make any difference really most of the time, you know, once in a blue moon, there might be something. But at the end of the day, even people that get a lot of dislikes, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's engagement. I mean, it's a, kind of a, a nice analytical thing that you can kind of tell. I also don't want to waste my time when I'm looking up how to videos or I'm looking up how to do something or tutorial. A dislike or, or even sometimes, too, there's fake videos or, or like... um videos that are completely lies now you're not even gonna be able to just gauge you're gonna have to watch the entire thing you know maybe that's what they want it for you know i don't know who knows man yeah then we need to do better with our comments <laughs> hey they're gonna have to start commenting more yeah good luck they they have a, they're already filtering all the comments the the live stream chat is filtered like two two times there's the YouTube filter, all right? And then there's the Streamlabs thing. And then we have mods as well. It, it, there's no more filtering than that. <laughs> creators can, that's true too. Yeah, JK said creators can just turn off the counter. YouTube has no biz. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. I think they know. Anytime I've ever gone to a video and I see the counter turned off, or the the comments turned off. I'm already turned off by the video itself. I'm like, ah, you turned it off? Ah, really? Ah, I, I click off because I can't talk. There's no comments. Uh, Christina, people were climbing up on stage saying people is dying. Stop the show. Travis must be must have been blind or death not to get that something was wrong. I think the biggest thing legally is they're gonna go for Live Nation. Gail should know better. She already messed up with something else. I forgot what it was a while back. She, she almost got canceled. <laughs> mm. 
But uh, but yeah, I'm good on concerts, man. I'm good. I mean, like mo- a lot of the people that have gone to multiple concerts, they said it's not really like that. That's not how it is. It's just this event was just horribly done and planned. Attorney Ben Crump says he's filing more than 90 lawsuits. That's just the start. 90. On behalf of Astro World Festival attendees. Damn. Oof. I super chatted. I read a couple of your super chats. Did you send something else? Let me see. I think I got them all. I got the last one I got was the stormy thing. Yeah. I read all yours. Thank you, C87. I appreciate it. But uh, I guess I'm going to get out of here, man. Yo, thank you guys so much for joining. Tonight is for the members on Discord. We're going to be on tonight around 10 p.m. Eastern. We're going to watch something and chill out, hang out. It's Friday. But, uh, and yeah, and you guys be safe. I'm working on some new stories. I talked to the private investigator, my crazy friend, and he was putting me on to the story that's not getting much attention. So I'm going to research that over the weekend. I might be bringing in a new missing person story. The seven-year-old, I'm waiting to see what happens with that because, and let me type her name in real quick. Um, Because there was a lot of rumor stuff going on. I didn't want to make a video based off of that. And then I have to take it down or it's wrong or whatever. So I was like, I'd rather just wait. Uh, Trinity Hurt. Was she found? What's going on with her? Still not found. Weird. Not really any updates. Guess we'll be waiting to see. I'm not going to mention the other story, though, because uh, I don't want people looking into it yet until I do it. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, man, thank you guys so much. You'll be safe. Have uh, a great day. Um, 